welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen, and joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Zoe Lyons, and Russell Howard, Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis, and Ed Byrne. <laughs> we start with a round called Headliners. Here's a picture of Prime Minister Gordon Brown with his immediate predecessor, Tony Blair. But what does BMCB stand for? Is it Brown's Mental Complete Breakdown? <laughs> <laughs> Or, or is it just Britain's Mr. Charisma Bypass? <laughs> is it Blair makes chimp body pop? <laughs> is it Brown's man boobs captivate Blair? <laughs> is it blundering morons crucifixion begins? <laughs> Just bollocks, my career's buggered. Yeah. <laughs> Some, sometimes that's all satire needs to be. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you look like uncles dancing at a wedding, I would go with British men can't boogie. Yes. <laughs> or, or is it... I've Brit still got it. I've still got it. <laughs> you show them. You show them. <laughs> it could be Blair might come back. There's an interesting reaction. Uh, that came from a dark place, didn't it? Uh, Somebody over there was sharpening a scythe. <laughs> OK, I'm going to steer you towards the correct answer. I think it's Blair... Blair's memo criticises Brown. I'll accept that as an answer. Well uh, done. Well, you. You'll accept it. This is the right answer or not? This is the news that Gordon Brown's political enemies are plotting to remove him from number 10. A leaked memo has been published which reveals Tony Blair's fury with Brown for criticising his record as Premier. It isn't news, though, is it, that Tony Blair hates Gordon Brown? No, it's not. It's not the actually. The news is the people who are thinking of, are going to take over from Gordon Brown, I think. That is, yeah. And this is... It's not the memo itself, it's the leaking of the memo. It's like... It's suddenly people are tiptoeing into view with the view to getting rid of Brown. It's David Miliband, isn't it? It is David Miliband. David Miliband always his one expression on his face, right, which is a sort of mixture of puzzlement and aggression, right, it's all like this. Which <laughs> makes me think that David Miliband lives in a cul-de-sac. Do you know that thing when you walk down a cul-de-sac by mistake and you see someone and they sort of look at you like, you don't live in a cul-de-sac. <laughs> Miliband, David Miliband's problem is that he isn't even well known <laughs> in his own constituency, right? So there was a story in the paper this week about David Miliband getting very, very excited because somebody came up to him in his constituency and said, uh, excuse me, can I, uh, can I have your autograph, please, Mr Henman? <laughs> what a double whammy of dull, though. Do you know what I mean? Some bloke went, oh, I thought it was Mr Tim Henman, but it turned out to be Mr David Miliband. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes my life's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Miliband's part of a Labour Mafia who are apparently called the Primrose Hill Gang. Ooh, which sounds like the, the campest bank robbers <laughs> ever. Put your hands in the air and dance! <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great, just doilies everywhere afterwards. Yeah. Ooh, Ooh, go around Primrose blowing Hill the froth from cappuccinos in other people's faces. <laughs> Take that! <laughs> and the chocolate. Ow! Yeah. Basically, Miliband is a slightly different type of career politician and they're going, oh, it'll be a breath of fresh air. No, it will be very slightly different. Vin Diesel, he'd be a breath of fresh air. <laughs> Sergeant Bash from Robot Wars. Why don't they ever just... <laughs> you know this, <they> oh... <laughs> we need somebody different to, lead, to, to lead the party. Why don't they ever just get someone in and go, yeah, we've got a new leader, he smokes a lot of grass and does kung fu. What about that? <laughs> I just don't think... I don't see how anyone could vote in good conscience for a man who said, and he did say this without any irony, without his tongue anywhere near his cheek, actually was quoted as saying, social justice is what gets me up in the morning. <laughs> like, Woo! like he has an alarm clock that is the sound of someone giving the correct respect to a single mother. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, rehabilitated youths come in and dress him before he has breakfast. S social justice gets me up in the morning sounds like the name of the world's most boring porn site. <laughs> <laughs> Are you being well paid for this? Good, good, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, and the benefits are all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's the point of replacing Gordon Brown with David Miliband? It's like replacing a copy of the Reader's Digest with an A to Z of Peterborough. <laughs> <laughs> May as well elect a nest of tables. <laughs> 
<laughs> right, who's come out in support of Brown? Uh, Alan Sugar. Alan Sugar. It's most remarkable. He yeah, did this uh, interview in The Sun where that's, I don't know what they're looking at there. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you see the line that Sugar said? There was this amazing line. I don't know if you read it. It was just gobbledygook. He was kind of going, Yeah, he's a good bloke. I lend him a monkey. Nuts and bolts. Knows what he's doing. He's still hired. And there was one sentence. I've written it down here. He said that we're looking for a leader as a nation who can bunny off a scratch. And you find yourself going, yeah, yeah, if you like. <laughs> what the hell does that do? Bunny off a scratch, you know? Can anyone weasel off a tickle? Yeah. You know? <laughs> Badger off a fumble? It's like Bunny. a porno wind in the willow. He's lost. <laughs> Alan Sugar seems to me like a sort of confused old lady. <laughs> Who are you? What are you doing here? What's your job? Who am I? Where am I? Where's the toilet? Help me. <laughs> <laughs> This is one of those things that no one is going to find funny now. But the next time you watch The Apprentice, next series come up, when he when he comes out when when they're sitting in the office and he arrives through that glass door, I always think he looks like he's coming out of the toilet. He <laughs> just <a> sort of <laughs> out. He looks like he's going to say, "I'll give that a few minutes, won't you?" They're bound to like each other, though, aren't they? Because apparently they both get up at six a.m. in the morning, <laughs> and frankly, they both look like they get up at six a.m. in the yeah. morning, don't they? <laughs> Alan Sugar, when he gets up at 6 a.m., he needs to look himself in the mirror and go, Alan, you need a couple of more hours in bed. <laughs> You're tired. <laughs> Quality. Quality wordplay, my friend. What always gets me about The Apprentice, by the way, is it's based on a lie, which is basically you've got two teams of people selling bananas. One make £800 and they get a helicopter trip around London. The other makes £750 and they sit in a cafeteria and he calls them losers uh, and fires one of them. And you're kind of going, that's a bit harsh. If you don't win, you've got to be fired. He made his money building the ninth best computer in the market. Yeah. So, you know, and then followed that up by building the second best satellite dish when there were only two satellite dishes. <laughs> uh, then he became the chairman of Spurs. So, frankly, he can't really <laughs> talk about being a winner. Yeah? As a matter of fact, what is Brown doing at the moment to get himself... Oh, he's, he's got a out. personal trainer, yeah, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. Is it, the idea is that Brown is supposed to be going on cross-country runs, right? Which clearly <laughs> isn't happening. What's happening is a woman is leading him into the woods every day <laughs> so that he can sit on a tree stump and cry. <laughs> <laughs> There must be an entrance to Narnia somewhere. <laughs> I love the idea he's got his iPod on and it's on shuffle and he's like, I've got the eye of the tiger. <laughs> and then Radiohead pops on, it's like, a job that slowly kills you. <laughs> Bruises I that. Well, I don't need that, I'm so excited. <laughs> That's right, I'm back. I think you're being really harsh. Well, I look forward to the first press conference after where he just stands and goes, mm. I'd like to see my gun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Have you got tickets for the gun show? Who <laughs> <laughs> here? Has a personal trainer. I have. Why are you looking at me? Do you, <laughs> you, do you have I a have personal trainer? I have in the past employed the past services you've had a personal of trainer. people too. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. And did it work? Um, I, I, yes, it worked very well, actually, to be honest. I am the very model of physical fitness. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it is astonishing. I often do an act on stage where I just go dun. <laughs> dun, 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 and I just move my breasts and my back no, around. I, I seem to remember you once telling me <laughs> that you have an exercise bike and a ski walker in your kitchen <laughs> and that once you've used the exercise bike for more than 25 minutes, your balls go numb and you have to crack one off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was also privy to that conversation. <laughs> I, I well, can, I, can I qualify this, right? He actually said... I, I, he it actually is, said the tongue. seat is very large for a bicycle, right? <laughs> it's a big, heavy seat. <laughs> and 15 to 20 minutes in, it cuts off blood flow to the gym. And I, I had to fluff just a bit. <laughs> Just to get things a kind of just circle. I don't actually I mean, finish up. Can, can I just ask you, what is the personal trainer doing while you're up to this? <laughs> I think it I'd watch some... more sport if this was involved in triathlon. I, think, I yeah. think we owe it to ourselves to turn that into a fitness video where yeah. Dara's <laughs> working out for 20 minutes and he just looks at the screen and goes, back in five. <laughs> and then... <laughs> when you finish like 30 minutes of cardio and go, hey, you're looking good out there, why don't you reward yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Every 30 minutes in your video, it just breaks into porn. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of that round, the points are going to go to Russell, Zoe and Andy! Very good. <laughs> Our next round is called Newsreel. We play in a recent piece of footage featuring people in the news and ask you to suggest what might be being said. This week's clip features Conservative leader David Cameron and the Lord Mayor of London, Boris Johnson. 
Right, Boris, leave all the talking to me. If you do need to talk, uh, please don't bang on about buses anymore. Talk about policies and try not to sound too posh. <laughs> what ho, peasants? <laughs> no, they, that's roughly uh, what I meant. Anyway, we're here to introduce London's new mayor. <clears throat> who's he? Who's the, who's the mayor? Oh, I'm the mayor. I'm sorry, I'm the mayor. Yes, <laughs> yes I'm the mayor. And this is David Cameron. We were, uh, we were eaten together, us and Robert Mugabe. Do you know, uh, <laughs> Yes, um, that's, anyway, please don't be fooled by the presence of a bus behind us. We can talk about many things other than buses. Uh, Boris has got many policies on crime and uh, employment and uh, littering. Um, and, uh, and buses! Yes, buses! I thought about buses. Oh, uh, buses, that's what I meant to talk about. Yes, everybody loves a bus, don't they? We all like a bus. Yes, we all love a bus, don't we? We love a bus. I tell you what I like, those Rootmaster buses. They're lovely, aren't they? They're root I think that's what they're called. Not the, not the bendy buses. No, they're, they're dangerous. They catch fire, they kill people, and... Uh... <laughs> About crime, would that be possible? Well, I'd rather talk about uh, rather talk about buses, to be honest, <laughs> because uh, although I'm a Tory, I've never been on a bus. I mean, why did I go on a bus? Uh, buses, buses are for poor people. I'm a posh person. <laughs> I would never go on a bus. Cameron's never been on a bus. His bike was stolen. Still didn't get on a bus. Waited for the show. <laughs> oh, is it time to get on? Ding dong. Please don't think <laughs> that we can only talk about, about buses. We can talk about many other things. And buses, yes, we can talk about them. And uh, crime. Buses, yes, we can talk about them. Crime, we can talk about crime. And uh, initiatives on uh, litter. We've got all that for London. It's a blueprint for London. And uh, why we didn't go for Geoffrey Archer, I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> this, this man is as mad as a box of spanners. Goodbye, I think <laughs> I'm going to be tainted with the same brush. Oh, is he gone? Has he paid his fare? Anyway, I tell you what, room for one more on top, as I said to someone's wife. Only joking. <laughs> anyway, here we go. The, uh... Well done to you. <laughs> now we play a round called Alexander Solzhenitsyn's Wheel of News. <laughs> This game involves Ed, Zoe, Frankie and Andy. So if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This is where we test our performance stand-up skills. We spin our news generator, it settles on a topic, and anyone can volunteer jokes about the chosen subject. The winner is a team I judge to produce the funniest stuff. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. The first topic is entertainment. Who wants to come on that? Ed Byrne. Um, I was watching a DVD the other day, horror DVD, Hostel Part 2. Not a very good film. Should have twigged by the fact that it was a sequel to Hostel Part 1. Also not a very good film. <laughs> um, Hostel Part 1 about men being tortured to death in an underground bunker for the pleasure of others. Hostel Part 2, women being tortured to death for the pleasure of others. Oh, they've really flipped it. Hostel Part 3, I imagine hermaphrodites up for the chop. Anyway, <laughs> I'm about to watch this film. And uh, before I watch it, I have to sit through the DVD piracy warning, which I think we can all agree is beginning to get on our collective tits. <laughs> uh, oh, this music's so funky, it makes me want to obey the law. <laughs> and it, it's the patronising nature of it. It's this thing of, you, you wouldn't steal a handbag. You wouldn't steal a car. So why would you steal a movie? I'm sitting there going, don't tell me what I would and wouldn't do. <laughs> you know me. I am drunk at four o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> in my pants, <laughs> about to watch women be tortured to death in an underground bunker in Eastern Europe. You're telling me I wouldn't nick a poxy handbag? <laughs> I think... I think you don't know me very well at all, sir. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's spin the wheel again. The subject is obesity. Who wants to come in on that? Zoe Lines. I was in a queue in Woolies. Don't judge me, they had a sale on DVDs. And um, <laughs> there was a woman in front of me with her kid. Now, there is no polite way of saying this. This kid was fat. She was huge! She didn't have a muffin top, more a sort of wedding cake tear effect going on. She was a big, <laughs> big kid. She was a big kid. She actually had a T-shirt on that said Little Princess. It was more like Little Principality. She looked like Monaco in a crop top. She... <laughs> She was a big kid, and uh, this kid picked up from the side there a, a, a bar of, of fruit and nut chocolate and held it up to her mum and said, Mum, Mum, can I have that? Can I have it? Mum, can I have this? And eventually her mother just lost it, turned round to this kid and went, No! You will like it! It's got fruit in it! <laughs> well done, Zoe Lyons! OK, we're left with Andy and Frankie. Let's spin the wheel again. The next topic is environment. Andy Parsons. <laughs> so, now, apparently, 
plastic bags are evil, because apparently <laughs> they take 100 years to biodegrade. Now, that came as a bit of a shock to me, because often when you get a bag in a supermarket, <laughs> they seem to biodegrade when you put anything heavy in them. <laughs> that is why people double bag, isn't it? Because otherwise, it's like a crap magic trick, isn't it? <laughs> they give you the bag, you put the bag on the counter, you put the stuff in the bag, you pull up the bag, and hey, presto, the stuff's still there on the bloody <laughs> counter. Well done, Andy Parsons. <laughs> OK, let's see what Frankie's been left with. Let's spin the wheel. It's celebrity. <laughs> Tom Cruise has got a creepy marriage going on, hasn't he? I reckon if you went round to their house for dinner, she'd have written, get help in the peas. <laughs> <laughs> you seen a photo of Amy Winehouse recently? My God, she looks like a campaign poster for neglected horses. <laughs> How did Wayne Rooney manage to get married? Probably only because I do sounds quite a lot like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Jade Goody's just been burgled. According to the paper, she lost £100,000 worth of her most prized possessions. That is a lot of turnips. <laughs> Frankie Boyle. <laughs> Points that go to Ed and Frankie. Our next round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question? <sighs> On the board are six categories. Zoe, which category would you like? Sport. OK, sport. The answer is 85,000 miles. What is the question? Uh, how far would the proclaimers have to walk these days to get a hit? <laughs> <laughs> if I was to add together all the times that people have sung, I would walk 500 miles at me... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is it? I love that. I love that stuff. You look like one of the proclaimers. One of the proclaimers, they're twins, you daft bastard. <laughs> <laughs> is it how long is a hen night limo? <laughs> <laughs> when is Stephen Hawking due for his next service? <laughs> is, it, is it what is the nearest that I will get to watching Mamma Mia? <laughs> Is it on a still day, how far away can you hear Brian <clears throat> Blessed? <laughs> <laughs> what distance has been covered by Dwayne Chambers in training in a sadly pointless exercise? <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it for legal reasons, <laughs> what is the closest that I'm allowed to come to the actress who plays Hermione in the Harry Potter film? <laughs> Is it how far has the Olympic flame travelled to actually get into Beijing? That's absolutely right, well done, Andy oh, Parsons. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When the torch came through London, it was amazing, wasn't it? Because they, the Chinese got to number 10 and barged Gordon Brown out of the way. And he's the only Scottish guy in the world that would have stood for that. Any other Scottish guy would have opened the door to number 10 in his pants. Looked at the ambassador with the torch and going, what's this, pal? Oh, the chicken and black bean sauce. <laughs> Did anyone see the, uh, the list of rules that the Chinese government have put in place? It's insane, it's isn't it? It's extraordinary. I don't know if you've seen it. One of them is you're only allowed to wear three colours during the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody laughing at the back. It's true, there is actually a Chinese fashion place. Got We're expecting a racist Got gag. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's amazing that none of the rules are don't run over anyone in a tank. <laughs> <laughs> they've been telling people to smile more. Yeah, Smiling more. Like the government they've... is issuing directives telling the people to smile. I just think the idea... I mean, going, you, you, faceless tool of the Communist Party. Why so glum? <laughs> <laughs> but, who watches the Olympics anyway? Surely the, the irony is the only people who watch the thing are people who are too lazy to switch off the TV. <laughs> who watches gymnastics? Watching gymnastics, <laughs> watching gymnastics is just paedophilia for cowards, Dara. <laughs> <laughs> so 
tell you what. If we arrested what? everybody who was watching the rhythmic gymnastics, the country would be a safer place. Do you deny it? I, I, I yes, I yes. yes. <laughs> I'm hoping we do re much sweeter reason. I'm hoping we do really well in the gymnastics because our best gymnast is called Beth Tweddle, and I want it to be a medal for Tweddle. <laughs> Given, uh, they haven't given advice because they're worried about terrorism, aren't they, after what's yes. happened in the last week? And they've actually told people if, you know, if terrorists do burst into their house, the advice apparently is to keep calm, right? Yeah. Not to fight back, but to try and text the police <laughs> from your mobile phone. Now, you'd think your average terrorist might be a bit alert to that. <laughs> what are you doing with your mobile phone? Oh, just playing snake. <laughs> Also, terrorist is quite a tricky word to text when you're yeah. under pressure. So you'd have to put, OMG, bad man, tie me up, send. Yeah. <laughs> the Olympics are boring, right? What we need is an event where we see who can jump from the greatest height. Because then we could get all these sort of depressed and suicidal people <laughs> and they could win something for their country when they die. <laughs> They are very worried, aren't they, in Beijing about the weather, about the smog. The smog is a big so issue. Do we know why it is? They're, they're, like, what they're going to do to get rid of all? I think, oh, to get rid of, I, think to, I think what they're going to do to get rid of the smog is they're going to, they're going to try and clear out all the burning monks for kickoff. <laughs> You know, they're shutting down all the economic activity in Beijing. Yeah. For three, they're shutting down factories, uh, traffic, everything. It's all been shut down. They must be delighted that Paula Radcliffe may not be fit, because the last thing they need with all that pollution is her coming and squatting and contaminating the water supply. <laughs> Do you see, it's one thing... Am I wrong about this, or have they got a guy running in the Olympics who's got no legs? That's quite difficult. No, they, he no, was not, going. He, he wanted to run on this. His name, I can't remember. Oscar Pistorius. Oscar Pistorius. Oscar Pistorius. Wasn't the yeah. thing, though, he had these fiberglass legs and yep. they said it gives him an unfair advantage? Overlooking, I think, the fact that he's got no legs. <laughs> that might balance it up slightly. Yeah. I say, don't let him run in the Olympics. Give him a robot arm and make him fight crime. <laughs> what do you think they, they, could give him a, they could give him a little thing like you have on a Skeletrix car? But you're Just not allowed. The track. <laughs> <laughs> they say you're not allowed. Like but much of it. Which unlikely figure has said she hopes to compete in the 2012 Jordan. Olympics? Dame Judi Dench. No, not God. Dame Judi Dench. <laughs> <laughs> That's Jordan. That's Jordan. What, we're not she... going with the Judi Dench story. No. That seems ridiculous. <laughs> what, she said... Judi Dench being a pole vaulter thing. That was <laughs> all in all the papers. Like she's um, she's pissed off, isn't she? Because she got chucked out of. Um... They wouldn't allow her to buy a table at the no, polo. No, they, they they, she was at some polo event and she wasn't allowed into the China White <laughs> tent. And somebody apparently they said, no, you're not the kind of person we're looking for here. Well, it right? could be. They, maybe they have a rule about having to be less than, you know, 45% silicon. <laughs> <laughs> polo is just disgusting, isn't it? It's just exhibitionism. It's rich exhibitionism. It's not like there's a, a five-a-side Sunday league of polo. Where people go down the Hackney Marshes and ride about in a Labrador, is it? <laughs> it's a, oh, look at me, kind of thing. If Jordan wants to see people riding dumb animals, she should just look in a mirror the next time she's having sex. <laughs> There's a, lot, there's a lot of stuff there, is it, about um, that I think they were worried that she would show herself up because there is a very there's an etiquette at Polo, there's an etiquette amongst uh, the posh, and some of it is completely incomprehensible. So, for example. As I discovered, you're not meant to turn your back on the Queen. Why? I don't know. She's very unlikely to nick anything. <laughs> but, but you're not. And I did that. I was 18. The, the Queen came to my school because someone had burnt my school down. <laughs> and, uh, Somebody had burnt your school down. Was that down? the stage and, of her uh, career when she was investigating mysteries? <laughs> <laughs> Inspector Queen. <laughs> it was cool. You paint her as some sort of Jessica Fletcher yeah. figure. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of that round, at the end of that round, the points go to Frankie Hewanen. <laughs> now we come to our final quick fire round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone. So if you can make your way over to the performance area, please. I call it ideas for scenarios we'd love to see, and the performers come in with their suggestions. OK, here we go. The first subject is... Bad things to say at a job interview. What can I bring to the job? A burning hatred of the West, a hook for a hand and a pilot's licence. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the five-year employment gap, yeah. I was canoeing. <laughs> Right, I hope we can all be professional about the fact that I've just split up with all three of you. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm really only here because I'm hoping to slip on a wet floor and then fall off a ladder. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've had a few changes of address, one with Scrubs Broadmoor, but for the last three months I've lived in your air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm really into diversity. In my last team, I made sure that we had a black, a fruit and a fatty. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have always wanted to work in a motel. I'm telling them, Mother, I'm telling them! <laughs> <laughs> this job would be a great opportunity for me to steal a shitload of stationery. <laughs> I remember you from the dungeon. How you doing? It's me, Gimpy Terry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Gimpy Terry's mate. <laughs> <laughs> Sum myself up in three words. <laughs> I suppose it would have to be killer alien vagina. <laughs> What do you mean I'm underqualified to be a plumber? I'm five hours late. I've done a piss in your sink. <laughs> when can I start? Yesterday. But I can only work till today. <laughs> <laughs> nine till five, nine till five. My medication wears off at three. <laughs> <laughs> the next topic is... <laughs> Things you wouldn't hear on Songs of Praise. Hello, Canterbury. Let's make some fucking noise! <laughs> well, the locals here on the Shetland Isles have given us a tremendous welcome. Today we have our act of worship, and tomorrow they're burning me in a wicker man. <laughs> <laughs> they call him G.O.D. and he the Big Daddy. He look like me, but he more beardy. <laughs> I'm Sister Margaret, and I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> the parishioners will now go forward to receive communion if they can get past Atlas and Predator. <laughs> 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 Christians in one corner, Muslims in the other. Let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Well, the goat is strapped to the altar, so let's begin. <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful. Such a shame there's no one actually up there to have heard it. <laughs> and we appear to have a streaker. No, one of the altar boys has escaped from the vestry. <laughs> If you're enjoying this, why not turn over to BBC Three, where you can enjoy Songs of Praise uncut. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, Choir of the Week. They're not the Von Trapp family, but they were the Trapp family. It's the Fritzels from Austria! <laughs> <laughs> the next reading is from St Paul's first letter to Jim will fix it. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of that round, the point for the Frankie Hugh and Anne. That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Ed Byrne. <laughs> Commiserations to Andy Parsons, Zoe Lyons and Russell Howard. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'm Dara Brian. Good night. And the comedy continues with Nevermind the Buzzcocks in half an hour. Before that, though, lack of sleep sends the lab rats more bonkers than ever. That's next here on BBC Two. <laughs>